think a week goes by where I'm not stressed out to the max about something. So what I need to do is I need to learn to cast my cares and give my cares and stress to Jesus. Today we want to talk all about five tips to manage stress because we know that every stinking one of us is stressed out about something, us included. <laughs> and they can be really little things. The things that you think, you know, logically you know, like this is ridiculous, mm -hmm. but your mind just keeps playing it over and over and you just get stressed out. You can feel your heart pumping. You just feel like uptight and your stomach is in knots and you're pacing and you don't know what to do. Yeah. And sometimes they're silly things, but sometimes they're very real things too. It just depends. Every situation is different. So today, our very first point about how to manage your stress is to cast your cares, like you already said. And for us as women of faith, we know that we are called to cast our cares on him for he cares for us. But how do we do that? Like that's so simple to say, but when we have these real worries, these real stressors in our life, like that just sometimes can sound like this easy thing to say, but difficult thing to do. Right. Like maybe you just lost your job. Maybe your husband just lost your job. Maybe your kids are stressed out and they're, they're needing to find a place to live. Maybe you're children are having difficulties in school or they're getting bullied. Maybe you don't know if you should homeschool or keep your kids in school. There's so many different things that make us worry. Mm -hmm. Let's just say finances, right? That's a huge topic for people. There's so many things that we can feel stressed out about. And in fact, it reminds me of a time in my life when my husband had lost his job. In fact, it's a whole big long story and we had claims through insurance and all this stuff and it was so stressful and we were for a long time for a long time we were without income for like nine months and I was pregnant at the time so it was like a high high stress scenario so and how I, in that time are you supposed to cast your care yeah exactly <laughs> like you know you have a baby on the way there's no money coming in I was so sick I couldn't work like it's like what do you do right how do you cast your cares in that situation but I remember that's years ago already I remember saying to my husband over and over and over again because he was not doing well mentally. He was very stressed out. And I remember saying to him over and over, look, God did not bring us this far to drop us off here. He will continue to provide. And we have to trust that his promises are true, even in the dark. That's right. And sometimes, you know, you got to play the scenario out and ask yourself, well, what's the worst thing? The absolute worst thing that could happen. Maybe you have to sell your car. Maybe you have to sell your house. Do you have parents or do you have friends or do you have someone that you could move into for a while? Because that's probably the the bottom of the barrel. Yeah. Right. And we had to do some hard things like that. Right. Like there are hard things that we have to do. And I mean, we kind of talking through all the points here without say, telling you what the points are. But we also have a really practical thing that you can do to cast your cares that's tangible that actually makes you feel like you're giving it away and in a video that we did last week you can go back and watch it we talked all about having a god box and this is a really simple tangible thing like you said where you actually write down your worry or your stress and you literally put your paper you can fold it up you can crumple it up or not but you just put it in your god box and when you do that, it's like an act of surrender. Mm -hmm. You are giving your care over to Jesus. And then it makes you feel good. Like you feel like, oh, I finally dropped it down. I've got the weight off my shoulders. And then when you start to worry again, you got to go and look at the God box. And you got to say, do I want to take that? thing back and pull it back out no, no you don't want you don't. to but we do it all the time right yeah. and so but it's such a literal thing that you yeah. it makes you go okay I've given it to God I'm gonna leave it there mm -hmm. and like the situation I was talking about that my husband and I were in like you know we had to do hard things we had to continue to cast our cares we had to like find real ways to manage the stress because the stress was real Okay. Right, right. And so casting your cares, you know, we put that as the first point because as believers, like I said, we have to trust that God's promises are true, even in the valleys, right? Like even though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, we will fear not for he is with us. And so like we have to have those promises at the forefront of our minds and you know that's one of the other points that we wanted to talk about so I'm not going to say much more about that right now <laughs> but let's just get into our second tip for managing stress but before we do we want you to tell us in the comments what it is that 
is stressing you out right now? Like what is the stressful situation in your life? Because sometimes even writing it down and like hitting enter and post is a big relief because it feels like we can let it go because we've shared it with somebody. And being vulnerable and sharing that stress does, it's like a sense of relief. Like mm -hmm. you actually can let it go then. If you don't know who we are and you're new here, we're Ruth and Casey and we're a mother-daughter team. So tip number two, this is simple, but we still have to do it, is to do some deep breathing. Now, what we like to say is as you do this deep breathing, and they're called belly breaths, you, as you're breathing in, you're inhaling, you think about this, you inhale light and love. And we're talking about inhaling the light and love of Jesus, letting him flow in through you. And then you exhale, as you blow out, you exhale the stress and toxicity or the worries that are keeping you like, ah, so, so uptight. Let it go, blow out and let go of that stress. Yeah, exactly. And this is the type of thing so often, like we hear about deep breathing, we know we should do it, but we don't do it, Yeah. right? So right now, hit pause and do five deep breaths. Okay, yeah. or you can keep listening while you're doing the deep breathing because the good thing about it is you can do it anywhere at any time. It's inconspicuous. And like, here's a tip about deep breathing. I just saw this as from a psychologist and <clears throat> we have a psychologist as well that we love and he has given us so many pointers. When you do this deep breathing, if you look at a window, if you're in your house or if you're in a car, you what you can do is you can just follow the the rectangle so you breathe in mm. and count to four but you can just look at the window and go and then hold as you go across and then blow out as you go down and then hold as you go across the bottom so it makes you focus on something that is not your worry you're focusing on the breathing it's a great tip yeah that is a Try great it. tip did you do it yet? <laughs> <laughs> so pause right now and do it. Okay, that tip brings us three. to our third tip, which is control the controllables. And this is kind of what we were alluding to in the first point when I was talking about my situation in the past is like, sometimes we have to do hard things. We can only control certain things. We can only control the controllables, but there's lots of things we can control. And like in the situation I was talking about, there were a lot of things that we could control. We could sell a vehicle. We could move in with somebody if we had to. We could, like, there's lots to do. We could cancel subscriptions. We could stop shopping. We could stop eating out, right? Like there's lots of things that we can control. We can only control ourselves and our own actions, but that that's a lot, right? <laughs> that's right. And so what can you control? Think about that. And what can you not control? And then figure out what you need to do within all of that. Because mm -hmm. that's all individual. Your life is different than ours. So there's things that we can control that you can't and vice versa. Yeah. And so like maybe you're struggling through a stressful relationship right now. Like maybe your whole source of stress is about your kids and your relationship with them is just like down in the toilet and you don't know how to even have a conversation with them. Like what can you control in that situation? You can't control them. You can't control their responses. You can't control how they're going to act. You can't control the choices they're going to make, but you can control all of those things about yourself. And so that might mean it's time for you to reach out and maybe it's time to apologize. Maybe it's time to reach out and say, hey, could we meet for a coffee and talk through what's going on? Because I, you know, I want reconciliation and, and I want, I want to have a relationship with you. But having said that, if they don't want to, then you've done your part and you have to be like, I'm going to like proud isn't the right word, but you have to be, um, I think proud of yourself for yeah, proud of yourself for actually reaching out and saying, I want to apologize. Yeah. And so there it all goes back to what can you control but yeah. here's some other things you can control you can control your your judgment about them you can control whether you're kind or not to them you can control your thoughts and your words about them because god is asking us to love you know what else you can control you can control whether or not you're praying for them that's right and yikes that's hard <laughs> sometimes right that's right and the bible does say love your enemies yeah and this we're talking about the scenario was your children <laughs> yeah. yes you do probably love your children but you don't like the situation yeah and maybe you don't like what they've done maybe you're even struggling to like them right now yeah so 
what can you control? Yeah. And let's control the controllables. I love that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Because I think the thing is, like, if you think about what you're stressed out about right now, often when we get stressed out, we just like throw our hands up and we're just stressed, but we don't do anything because we feel stuck because we don't know how to move forward because it feels so big and it feels so overwhelming and we're just like drowning in it. But there are things we can control, even if the only thing we can control in the moment is our thoughts. Because the Bible does tell us that we are called to think about things that are true and noble and honorable and righteous and of good rapport. So you got to ask yourself, what are you thinking about? Here's the thing. In all this stress, another controllable thing is if you don't know what to do, seek some professional help. Yeah. Because that you can do. Mm -hmm. And sometimes our stress is so big that we have to do that. Right? Yeah, and our to situations are so big and we need somebody with an outside perspective, perspective. Yeah. to be able to help us walk through it. And you know what? They can give us tools to help us navigate the stress in our life going forward too. It's called resiliency. That's right. And perspective is a, that's another whole point that we didn't even write down. But yeah, we have to learn to build on the skills that we have and keep using them so that we are resilient mm -hmm. and sometimes you might even be able to rather than you know going to a mental health professional you might be able to have a conversation with like your pastor or a trusted friend or somebody but sometimes just that outside counsel is like exactly what's needed and maybe your church has counseling for you mm -hmm. so yeah if you need it please that's a controllable thing absolutely so point number four focus on something completely different and what i mean is that Sometimes our minds are so focused on our worries and maybe we've done the God box and we keep taking it back. We keep taking it back. We need to leave it there. So how do we leave it there for good? Well, focus on something completely different where your mind has to actually be challenged and you have to really concentrate and think. So maybe, maybe you're a knitter or maybe you're a sewer or maybe um, you like to puzzle or maybe you need to like have a project that you actually have to physically put together like you're going to get out a screwdriver and nail you're going to hammer something I don't know what it is but I know for me that if I let my mind completely focus on something different the other problem is gone mm -hmm. it's not there in the forefront anymore because I'm focused on something different yeah because I've heard it said before you can only think about one thing at a time like your brain does not actually have the ability to think about multiple things at one time, right? And That's so true. I think like, I'm thinking of that verse that talks about how perfect love casts out fear, right? We can only think about love or fear. We cannot think about both things at the same time. And so we have to sometimes force ourselves to think about something different because like we have to drive out that fear. We have to drive out that stress we have to drive out the anxiety and we can do that by focusing on something else. And when you do that, when you're focusing on something else, I'm going to say it gives your mind that rest that it needs from the stress. Yeah. And it doesn't mean that your problems have gone away, no. right? But our brains, like sometimes we need, our brains need a chance to go like, whew, okay. Because they're so fatigued. Yeah. Yeah. So we just need to focus on something different. Mm-hmm. So that's point number four. What's point number five? Point number five is another one that you're probably going to go like, yeah, 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 yeah. But we want you to go do it, okay? And that is to move your body and get some exercise. Studies have shown us it's that... It's been proven. Yes. That exercise is as effective, if not more effective, than medication for anxiety and depression. Like, let me say that again. Exercise is as effective, if not more effective, than medication for managing really stress, but anxiety and depression. But we get so laissez-faire about the exercise, about moving our bodies, and we don't feel like doing it. Mm -hmm. That's the whole thing. It's easier not to. Yeah. So we have to do something to make us do it. Because our feelings just lead us astray, right? We don't feel like it, but we're not feeling like doing anything when we're in that mindset. That's right. So we have to overcome that. And we often talk about you know how um, our thoughts all those worries lead to feelings and if those feelings are negative we're gonna lead to negative results yeah because our feelings cause us to act right and our actions produce our results that's right and so we we need to just move our bodies we need to exercise whether we want to or not it's not a matter of 
feeling. Do yeah. we want to? No, we don't. Do we need to? Yes, we do. Yeah. And if you're actually serious about wanting to like feel better and manage your stress, then exercise needs to be part <laughs> of your priority list, right? Does that mean you have to go run a 10 kilometer marathon? No, but it does mean that you need to move your body right? And that can be doing walking videos on YouTube. We love to do those in the winter at home when the roads are icy and you can't get outside. You can do 10 minutes, right? That's right. And you can dance. And have them on YouTube. Yeah. In your living room, you can go outside for a walk. You can join a gym. You can join an exercise class. Like it doesn't matter what you do. Thing. I'm going to say if you put on a beautiful worship song that's upbeat and you're dancing around your living room, you're not going to be focused on your worries. Yeah. Exactly. I can guarantee that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You're going to be focused on worshiping and that's what we can do. Yeah. So make sure that you're moving your body. Okay. Like whether you want to or not, sometimes we have to exercise some self-control and do it anyways. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> that's some tough love for you when you're managing your stress. Do it anyway. So we really truly hope that these five tips to manage your stress is going to help you manage your stress. We just want to let you know that we have recently launched a new membership community right here on YouTube and we would love to have you come join us. It's an incredible way for you to support us. Side note, another incredible way for you to support us is by subscribing and liking this video and commenting for us. That also is a big support. And but share it with your friends. Exactly. But if you want to come support us through joining our membership community, it's a great place where we are providing extra video content for you to dive a little bit deeper in some of these topics, share a little bit more vulnerable information ourselves. Uh, we're going to have a weekly prayer thread and you also get special emojis and a badge beside your name <laughs> that only you can use as a member. So the price is uh, $5.99 Canadian, no, $6.99 Canadian, $5.99 US. Yeah. And uh, it's all just done right here through YouTube. So it's secure payment and all of those things. So if you want to come check that out, the uh, we'll link it below in the description. So as always, we like to end these videos by saying, remember this, you are a beautiful woman chosen for greatness. And we believe in you.